Why making a video of the results of a search? Well, if you look closely, this search has something unusual. First of all, I'm in the log activity tab, so I'm searching on the events or logs. And notice that these parameters are standard to get. This is from Sysmon, one of my machines in here. This is uh, from the browser going to different places that the source IP of the machine, source port, destination port. We get those from Sysmon. There's nothing strange about that except when we move to the last two column. Total source bytes, total destination bytes. Those are not fields that you get in any scene from Sysmon, in any logs per se. Those are fields you get from Network Activity tab. So basically what we are doing in here is sort of a join between two databases, the events database and the flow database. It's not really a join, but it is sort of the same functionality. We can get into a single search of that data. And I'm going to get into the details and explain all that, uh, but uh, just to at a glance, and I'm going to explain this in, uh, in detail. This is made possible by mainly one thing, is this custom function that was written by a gentleman in Germany called Julian Sattelmeier. I hope I'm not pronouncing his um, last name too wrong. But, uh, and Mutas found out about this table join custom function and he modified it to work also with flows as well. That's what we're going to be explaining how you actually do that today. Before proceeding, two things. One is in the video description of this and all my videos. There's a link to a public books folder. There you will find a subfolder called Mutas Join. Actually, probably should have called it Mutas and Julian um, Join. But you'll find a text file that I'm going to show you in a minute. And Actually, uh, not this file, but you'll find this file, this table join file. And at the end of this video, or maybe this video gets too long in another video, I'll show you how you set this up. Okay, so what is the logic behind all this? In the search from Sysmon, we get these parameters source IP, destination IP, process name, username. And in the NetFlow, we get similar things, source IP, source port, destination port, but other things which are source byte and destination byte. And the idea is to combine them together, as you saw me doing before. But there are a couple of things that you need to do. Let's first grab this search and put it into the clipboard and let me actually change this number because I've been playing with this and you'll see why in a second but every time you run this you'll need to change the name of this variable which is actually the search ID more, more on that in, in a second so I go into the network activity and I go here I'm sorry and I go here and grab and paste that And we get this result. Let's actually understand a little bit this. The, these columns need no introduction. You know what this is. This is the important one, the flow tuple. That's just a name for a key. This is the combination of source IP, destination IP, port that that matches whatever exists in the subsequent search that we will do from the logs perspective. Okay, let's look at the syntax of this because there are some things that uh, at least uh, were new to me. Well, this is, you know, that tuple is generated by a concatenation. That, that's something that we have shown in previous AQL videos. And that's what we see them all put together one after another and um, these are standard parameter from flows the important thing is this word in here into okay 
that's a way in SQL and in AQL as well to com put the results of this search in the flows into a search ID and that search ID has a name, a variable name. We call it flow summary. And every time you run the search, a new variable will need to be created because the old one will be already used. If I try to run this twice, I'm going to get an error. You're going to say that flow summary already exists. So that's what I, you see me incrementing this variable name, right? So the, the thing is that there is this, all this data has been kind of moved into this table. Uh, the result of that search is, and it's called flow summary seven. The rest is just a condition. You say, well, we only are interested from local to remote, and then uh, this grouping uh, for the last one day. And you have that search in that text file that I put in there. I used to put the protocol ID here, but I take it out because we, we, we don't need that, that part. That's a little bit of a, extra complexity. So now, because we have that, we can even do this. And this exemplifies what we are doing. If we go to the log activity tab and we paste that search saying, give me all the columns from flow summary. I think that the one that we just did was seven. Correct. So if I do from flow summary seven, we get, even though we're in the log activity tab, we get, you know, total source by, total destination by, and, and all that, because it's a search ID. Just to prove that concept even further, and I apologize if I'm sh sharing too much information here. If we go to the interactive API, and we go into Arial, and we go into searches, and we go into search ID. Actually, I need to go to results. And in here, I select table as the format. And if I put here flow summary seven, I should get the same results here in a table format. But notice that the thing that is going to connect the searches from the net flows and the searches from the logs is this what we call here flow tuple which is that unique combination or well, if this repeated more than once you get more than one result but it's that combination that sets uh, so if you were interested in looking at when the source ip is this 105 specifically you will need to specify only this particular variable name which is the we name it flow tuple okay so what we're going to be doing next is we're going to execute from the logs this particular search. But let's actually take a look at it before we do that. So notice that we have a nested statement in here. We have this select that is going to extract these columns from the result of this select, which is concatenating those elements as an event tuple. And then it's going to use that event tuple in the actual join to extract the field total destination byte and it does it again to extract the total source bytes. This is just a QID of that particular uh, event from from Sysmon, and there's a device type which is uh, Windows Logs uh, from last day. With when and give me everything that doesn't have zeros in it. Let's actually so we copy that. Let's actually go into the Log Activity tab and execute that search and if I didn't screw anything up in here that search is taking three seconds and 480 milliseconds and here are the results if we see that stuff that I started the video with these are Sysmon I mean these are Sysmon only type of data these are Sysmon and network net flows and these are net flows only all combining one why is the significance of this i probably should have started the video with that the significant is that particularly with q and i in q and i you will be able to get in net flows and i'm going to do a video on that later of whatever stuff you want to extract from the payload just as you do with normal logs and that's very powerful 
because especially for IoT devices and stuff that we don't do out of the box, you're going to be able to extract those, those things from the payload. So you will have those fields. And if you want to show them together in a search from logs, this is the way of doing it. In this particular case, we are interested, let's say that this is a malicious uh, process. It's, it's not, obviously, this is Chrome. But if we want to see whether uh, this is, uh, for example, the calculator, and all of a sudden the calculator is sending bytes in and out, uh, what the heck is that? The calculator, if, if it sends anything at all, it should be minimal. Why is it sending all these bytes back and forth? It might be a process hiding and pretending to be the calculator when he's uh, doing something malicious. That's the value of uh, the capability of getting into a single searching queue reader, data from the logs as well as data from the flows. I'm going to create a second video, a very short one, that explains how you set this up. It's very simple, but this video is already passing the 10-minute mark, which I like to stay in all my videos.